analysis. Um, so trying to create interlinks between any analyses that have been actually happening and any potential tools that we have there. As you can see, when it says type of electric music, I've all put acousmatic because that's been the focus of the majority of my um, principal um, investigation. Um, I'm very aware that there's more than actually is listed there, but um, unfortunately I don't have enough time to keep adding to this all the time. It's the maintenance and um, content management is uh, enough, unfortunately. So hopefully I'll get around to adding some more in the near future. Um, also to try and um, add some more content, I've um, got an analytical sphere source, which I started a few, a few weeks ago. Um, Realising that there was such a good resource already, um, I just put links to the EARS website because I didn't want to reinvent the wheel, as it were. Um, so these, if anyone has any questions, perhaps within the RM project, uh, or if they have any um, considerations of what a particular word means, um, there's always references to um, the EARS website, which is a fantastic resource, of course. Um, and that is pretty much the current version of RMA. Um, as it stands. I won't go into the um, community area because it's just a forum. Um, there's an analysis software list, but that's just another table. I won't go into that because it's not relevant. I will quickly go back to my presentation, just for a brief moment. So, what are the issues with this platform? Well, as you might be aware um, from looking at it, it's not particularly user-friendly. It's um, uh, Wikipedia, um, it, 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 for, for those type of uh, projects, is perfect because it is about community engagement and drawing up a consensus for a particular piece of information. Um, it's not good for publication. So for pub um, doing a pub you know, publishing an analysis on RMA, it's a long and drawn out procedure. Um, it's quite hard to navigate. Um, for me, it's old hat because I've actually built it from the ground up that I know the ins and outs. But for other people, they've expressed to me that it's not the easiest thing to navigate, and obviously I'm not the best judge of that from being the person who created this. Um, on a personal note, it actually is difficult to maintain. Um, for example, if I, um, as I mentioned, I, I, I formatted the analyses on there to have a particular um, frame, framework or template to work from. If I, for example, want to change that, I not only have to change the, article, um, the analyses that are coming in after, but also the previous ones. There's no um, underneath algorithm that actually drive um, changes throughout the whole website. I have to do it by hand, which of course, as you can imagine, is quite quite taxing. Uh, there's also no notification of when changes actually arise. Um, for example, if someone was to comment on uh, in, in the forum, um, no one who has actually commented previously actually gets a notification that they've done that. So I have to sometimes email them and say, oh, by the way, something's <laughs> happened. Um, so it's not the best way of keeping the communication going, um, which is... Um, a uh, problem on my part, mainly because I felt I didn't want to um, spam people with loads of information of when notifications were happening. Um, but now I realise that there needs to be obviously some notification in order to maintain interest and understanding of what's going on. So, I am looking towards the future and I have developed a future incarnation of the Oromo project. Um, what is the future? It is moving from a wiki platform to a content management system. Um, the particular system that I've, re I've been using in, um, my, on my local host server is called Drupal. Um, I don't know if any of you know it, I won't go into too much detail, but it's open source um, and there's plenty of extensions for adding uh, content beyond its fundamental capabilities. So it's a really powerful piece of um, open source software. Um, the idea is to remove the unless unnecessary clutter, which is um, in <laughs> innate in um, MediaWiki because it is designed to be this um, almost um, from a programmer's point of view how you'd inter interact with each other. In this respect, for, for people in, within our field, we don't want that. We want very simple navigation, which Wikipedia and um, MediaWiki does not offer. Um, I also want the system to work for me. I don't want to be chained to always changing things um, when new things arise or when I want to change something. So for, for to try and free up my time so I can actually be adding content rather than maintaining the site, I want um, a lot of that to be done behind the scenes. I also want a better end user experience so that, um, as you can probably imagine, when I say to people, can you do an analysis, that in itself is a barrier. So putting um, a media wiki page in front of them and expecting to input it all into that um, is just adding unnecessary stress to perhaps what is not something they potentially do on a daily basis anyway. 
And with that in mind, I want an easier submission for analyses. Um, at the moment, it's a, it's a long, drawn-out process, and um, it's just not practical. So I want to give you a brief demonstration of um, a shell version, uh, a core version of uh, a Drupal system that I've uh, actually been uh, creating on my laptop. I'll just um, open that up for you now. Do not worry, I'm not going into logo designs in the future, so that's, that's not on the cards. But um, I tried to design something different to, to show there was a difference. Anyway, this is the um, Orima, uh, actually within a Drupal platform. And perhaps it doesn't look that different, but trust me, there's a lot of advances in this one, which are um, very, very well received on my part specifically. Mainly because um, you probably noticed that there's very little on the page rather than having all of that information, all those links, it's a um, much more slimmed down version. And in fact, all the navigation is just, ha just happens in this corner here. So for example, if I want to add some content, I can choose from a template that are listed down there. Some of these obviously won't be in the, uh, in the final version. Um, but if, for example, if I want to upload an analysis, I can just literally click on there, be taken to a template page where I fill out all the information relating to that analysis, um, obviously write any description there, um, write references, uh, tag, which isn't something that I haven't been able to do in media working, and also upload a uh, multitude of files, um, all within that one page, rather than having to go back and forth, um, which has been the case with um, media working. Um, I will not save that because there's nothing there. Um, similarly, uh, if I want to add in an, an analytical tool, I should be looking at my laptop to do this, um, similar format, a slightly different template, so I can actually de devise um, content types specific to my potential need, and I can add in more information afterwards. Rather than having to go through all the analyses and change everything, I can do it from um, one point, which is um, the uh, admin box, which you can see up here, which I won't go into. Um, very similar references and tags. Um, obviously less information than the analysis because you're perhaps not uploading um, PDFs or files. Maybe that's not the case, but the community can tell me otherwise. Um, the wonderful thing is that when you actually upload analysis, you probably notice in the corner here uh, that there's the recent analyses, that's a feed that automatically is updated when people upload analysis, so you have the information directly on the front page. Um, also, which is um, my particular um, favourite thing about the uh, Drupal, is that I don't have to maintain tables anymore. It automatically adds them in and sorts them out for me. So I can say any composition by Dripsy put in the top, any top composition, uh, sorry, uh, analyses by uh, regarding value flow, I can um, have there. And in a similar fashion, this is what um, the same um, analysis actually looks like on um, the Drupal version. So very similar, you have all your information here, um, links to PDFs, and again, you can add comments directly below if you so wish, if you um, have the privileges, of course, to do so. Um, and again, here's Peter Batchelor's, which is a much more in-depth analysis, but this is how it looks on uh, the opposite platform, as it were. Um, yes, I won't go into that again, because you've already seen it. Uh, again, I can also list them by all analyses. So again, similar to the recent um, analyses, I can just have um, snapshot views, um, very similar to a blog entry, so just a chronological um, indication of what's happening. And again, uh, with the analytical tools, I can have um, automatic updates when people add information, and again, similar articles that are on the wiki itself. And again, forums and everything. I've pretty much covered everything I need to cover on this particular outing. I'm going to go back to my presentation. <coughs> so, any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Would Pierre like to come set up while people ask questions? Yeah. Yes, please. Really I, go ahead. Um, I just wondered if there's any facility within the Drupal or whether you're anticipating um, um, comments and notes by users integrated into the pages, you know, for the post-its. 
Right. I see. So actually annotating the actual yeah, stuff. Yeah, I just wondered if you thought about that before. That's, the forum seems something separate at the moment. It's also obviously valuable. Sure. This is an interesting um, thing because actually I had um, people saying um, to me when, when there actually were um, individual discussion tabs for each individual um, analysis, they said, well, we want a place where they're all together because if I were to reference someone else's, do I do it in that tab or do I do it in the tab that I'm referring to? And it's just that's the issue that becomes about. Mm -hmm. So the forum was basically a place to you know, have everything in one particular area so that when people want to find information, it's readily available. With regards to kind of the sticky idea, the sticky notes, um, there might be an extension in Drupal to do those sort of things. I haven't thought about it, but initially what the, uh, the software offers is basically just, um, as a blog, just um, comments underneath. And there's a, an, a, an external forum where you can have more general discussions. Um, I'm not sure how I, I'd go about it, because how it would work with other people viewing it in someone else's notes, it might be a bit cluttered again. So perhaps the easiest way is just to keep it in, yes. in a, form, a you formulated... You can turn those things on and off. Sure. Well, I, 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 as I said, I'll look into yeah, it, no, but it's, uh, it's an interesting easy. concept. Maybe it would be possible to have the forum uh, just uh, visible. The, yeah. the forum page for the piece, yeah. showing under the piece, okay. which would just be referenced from there, mm -hmm. and you could maybe directly post there, but it would still it would still uh, post it to the real forum, but it would just be linked there. Sure. Maybe something like that might be possible. As I said, the um, the version that I'm currently running on my, my laptop is basically just to get the um, the ground running. Um, any information, any suggestions that are, are, are fantastic because actually that will help me consider in the future of what I can potentially do. Um, again, I can't really describe what the potential is without knowing the extensions out there. I'm not a programmer myself, so I can't build these my, myself. So I'm kind of at the... Uh, Disposal of the open source community that I've been doing. Done pretty well. <laughs> it wasn't an easy process, it certainly wasn't, but uh, um, yes, a lot, of, a lot of learning, but um, it's been worthwhile, I believe, in the end. Well, following up from that, presumably, uh, I mean, at the moment, the person doing the analysis can put up a PDF there. Yes. Um, presumably, it wouldn't be too difficult, and maybe you can do this already, I don't know, for someone else commenting on that analysis. Say they had an alternative uh, structural chart, so there'd be, they could put that up as a PDF alongside it, so people could yes. see alternatives and then have the comments. That might be one way of getting different material there easily. Sure. Um, this is one of the main things that I think Simon brought up, and as I think I mentioned in, in the presentation, is that there is this, um, there's this general want to be able to cross-examine two different analyses and describe the differences and say to um, perhaps the analysis or potential other users why this one works and why this one perhaps answers some, some questions that the other one doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, from a logistical standpoint, it's still hard for me to understand, to make it um, uh, intuitive enough as well, and also to the implementation, how to do that. Because I, if there's more than three analyses for a particular composition, then it's just going to become a cluttered page, for example. And you, you wouldn't know which two you'd perhaps want to um, discuss in detail. So from that point, I'm not sure how to do it. I know there's a want. Um, I'm still figuring out the, um, the methodology. Yes? When you're finished with your PhD project, who's going to be the editor of the... Mm -hmm. Right. Good question. Um, I'm in the process of considering how it would live on outside of my PhD. I, I ideally would love it to, to continue um, beyond my PhD. The, the idea is that I currently have a core um, participant group of over 20 people who um, I, I basically advertised it at two various universities to, for postgraduates to see if there was any interest in people actually becoming part of it. And there was quite a bit in, big interest. After the alpha version, my hope is that people will be able to actually join um, on their own free will. At the moment, they can't do that. But at that point, you'll be able to actually um, set, you know, ask for um, an email or a, a verification to say, I want access. And the way most community-based um, websites work is that it doesn't need the creator to continue on. Obviously, it needs the server space, and it needs the, um, uh, the maintenance. But in terms of the moderation of uh, material, my hope is that um, people will start becoming moderators in themselves. At the moment, I'm doing obviously most of the work because I have the biggest experience of using MediaWiki. But when Drupal comes in, my hope is that because it's easier to use, um, I'll be able to let other people um, take the ball in terms of actually moderating the, uh, the content. Thank you, Mike. More questions from Mike later, I'm sure. Thank you. If you have not...